Good morning students. Welcome to the second session of chapter 9 Reproduction in Animals. In previous session we have studied basic information of reproduction and importance of reproduction, modes of reproduction, sexual reproduction, male and female reproductive organs and types of fertilization. I hope you enjoyed last video and you watched it nicely. In the second session of chapter 9 reproduction in animals, we will study about internal and external fertilization in detail. IVF mean in vitro fertilization. It is also known as test tube babies. Development of embryo. Formation of egg cell. Viviparous and oviparous animals, young ones to adults. Students, now we are starting with internal fertilization. As we have discussed in session 1, the fertilization which takes place inside the female body is called internal fertilization. In internal fertilization, sperm cells are deposited inside the female's body where they meet an egg cell and then development will occur. Internal fertilization occurs in many animals including human, cow, dog and hen. Students, now we will study external fertilization as we have studied in session 1 fertilization which take place outside the female body is called external fertilization. We have also studied that external fertilization take place in most of the aquatic animals. Let us find out how this happens. During spring or rainy season, frogs and toads move to ponds and slow flowing streams. When the male and female come together in water, the female lays hundreds of eggs. As the eggs are laid, the male deposits sperms over them. Each sperm swims randomly in water with the help of its long tail. The sperms come in a contact with the eggs. This result in fertilization. This type of fertilization in which fusion of a male and female gamete take place outside the female body is called external fertilization. In animals which undergo external fertilization, development of the embryo take place outside the female body. The embryos continue to grow within their egg coverings. After the embryos develop, the eggs hatch and the baby will born. It is very common in aquatic animals such as fish, starfish, frog, etc. Now you have a question in your mind, why do fish and frogs lay eggs in hundreds various a hen lays only one egg at a time. What is the reason behind it? Let us find out. Though these animals lay hundreds of eggs and release millions of sperms, all the eggs do not get fertilized and developed into new individuals. This is because the eggs and sperms get exposed to water movement, wind and rainfall. Also, there are other animals in the pond which may feed on the eggs. Thus, production of large number of eggs and sperms is necessary to ensure fertilization of at least few of them. Students, now we will discuss difference between internal and external fertilization. Internal fertilization means the development of baby 
which takes place inside the female body is called internal fertilization and the development of baby which takes place outside the female body is called external fertilization in external fertilization many zygotes will be produced and in internal fertilization few zygotes will be produced we can say that in internal fertilization there is more protection for developing embryo compared to internal fertilization in external fertilization we can say that less protection for developing embryo students now we will get more information regarding ivf ivf mean in vitro fertilization some women's ovary ducts are blocked these women are unable to bear babies because sperms cannot reach the egg for fertilization in such cases doctors collect freshly released egg and sperms and keep them together for few hours for ivf or in vitro fertilization in this case fertilization occur outside the female body in case fertilization occurs the zygote is allowed to develop for about a week and then it is placed in the mother's uterus complete development takes place in the uterus and the baby is born like any other baby babies born through this technique are called test tube babies this term is actually misleading because babies cannot grow in test tubes students now we will study how development of embryo take place fertilization results in the formation of zygote which begins to develop into an embryo the cells then begin to form groups that develop into different tissues and organs of the body this developing structure is termed an embryo the embryo continues to develop in the uterus it gradually develops the body parts such as hands legs head eyes and ears the stage of the embryo in which all the body parts can be identified is called a fetus when the development of the fetus is complete the mother gives birth to the baby students now we will study formation of egg shell as you have studied in session 1 internal fertilization take place in hens after fertilization the zygote divides continuously to the ovary duct as it travels down many protective layers formed around it the hard shell in a hen's egg is one such protective layer which will protect zygote after the shell is formed the hen finally lays egg the embryo takes about 3 weeks to develop into a chick the hen seeds on the eggs to provide sufficient warmth after the chick is completely developed it bursts open the egg shell and come out in different animals time of child bearing is different in a hen it is 3 week mean 21 days in human it is 9 months mean 280 days elephants have the longest child bearing period of all mammals and it is 22 months mean 640 to 660 days the eggs of 
few animals are easy to collect but you can never collect eggs of some animals like dog and cat because they never lay eggs we classified animal in two groups viviparous and oviparous animals students now we will study viviparous and oviparous animals the animals which give birth to young ones are called viviparous animals human beings cow dog which give birth to young ones are called viviparous animals the animals which lay eggs are called oviparous animals animals such as hen frog lizard and butterfly which lay eggs are called oviparous animals now we will study how organisms grow there are mainly two ways to convert into an adult from young ones first one is direct development and other one is indirect development now we will start with direct development when the young one of an animal resembles the adult then direct development takes place during direct development there is no larva stage this type of development take place in human monkey and all mammals mammals mean the animals which give birth to directly young one and we know that all human beings are look like similar so we can say that there is direct development in human beings now we will start with indirect development when the young one of an animal does not resemble the adult then indirect development takes place during indirect development there is larva stage between the initial and final stage students now we will learn in detail about indirect development of animal through example of silkworm and frog you have studied last year the life cycle of silkworm it is as follows female silkworm will lay egg from this egg caterpillar will come out after some time and some growth caterpillar further convert themselves into pupa after some time pupa will break down and from there adult silkworm will form so we can say that the caterpillar of the silkworm looks very different from the adult moth the transformation of the larva into an adult through some drastic change is called metamorphosis same way in a frog fertilized egg develops into tadpole which later develop into adult frog the tadpole which is very different from the adult frog and it is unable to jumping transforms into an adult frog that is capable of jumping and swimming so we can say that life cycle of frog first of all female frog will lay egg from this egg tadpole will form and from the tadpole after some time they will convert into adult frog the transformation of the larva into an adult through drastic change is called metamorphosis so we can say that through the metamorphosis process the young one will convert into adult so we can say that indirect development take place in frog butterfly and silkworm the topic which we have covered in today's session is very much important for exam purpose in the next session we will study about 
asexual reproduction and its different types. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.